My name is Della, and we're with the Chattanooga Public Library, and this is my daughter, Alyssa. Hey, Alyssa. And today, we are going to be making solar ovens. So I'm gonna lead us in some instructions and go over the supplies, and Della and Alyssa are gonna do it alongside me. So we're gonna go over supplies, gather them, and get going. Yay! All right, so for our solar ovens today, we are gonna need a few supplies. So we are gonna need a shoebox with a lid. That's very important. That's gonna be what we make our entire solar oven out of. We're gonna need some aluminum foil, some plastic wrap, some tape and or glue, it's up to you. A ruler and a Sharpie. You don't have to have the ruler, but sometimes it can help. A scissors or an X-Acto knife, but as always, we have to be very, very, very careful with our X-Acto knife. And then we'll also need either black construction paper or black paint. So Della has construction paper, I have paint. So we're just gonna make do with what we have. So go gather your supplies and then come back for instructions. All right, for our first step, what we are going to do is take the lid off of our shoe box and we are going to take some aluminum foil and cover the entire inside of our shoe box. So this is gonna be a little loud because aluminum foil is loud. So I might mute us during this part, but go ahead and do yours. So while we work on our solar ovens, we're also gonna be talking about light, prisms, and rainbows. So here we go. A few days ago, on June 20th, 2020, the summer solstice happened. That means that the sun was at its highest and northernmost possible spot in the sky. The Earth is tilted just a little, so it doesn't spin on its north to south pole axis exactly upright. And so, the summer solstice marks the day and time where the Earth's north pole is tilted to place it as close to the sun as it will be all year long. We have the longest day in the northern hemisphere on the summer solstice. Speaking of the day with the most light, did you know that light is more than we can see with our eyes? Way more, actually. Light is made of both magnetic and electric energy that travels in waves that move at 186,000 miles per second, making it one of the fastest moving energy forces in the known universe. Light is also made up of particles called photons, and the amount of energy in each photon will determine how strong the light is. It's also good to know that light produces both color and heat. The rainbow colors, or Roy G. Biv, are the part of light in the visible range, which is the kind of light that human eyes can see. You probably know about infrared light, which is the range of light waves before the red ones that we can see, and ultraviolet, or UV, which is the range of light waves after the violet ones that are at the end of the rainbow. The color of objects we see is the reflection, or bouncing off, of the light waves that are not absorbed by the object. This means that red objects absorb all of the colors in the visible light range, except red. Blue objects absorb all colors but blue, and so on and so forth for all of the colors that your eye can see. So our next step is going to be taking either our black construction paper, or black paint, and you're going to fill the entire bottom of your shoebox with either one of those things. So you might have to cut your construction paper. I'm gonna have to paint over my aluminum foil. So we're gonna do this first, mostly so the paint can dry while we do everything else. But you do wanna glue it down and make sure that it is nice, a good fit. Part of the reason that we know so much about light is because of Sir Isaac Newton, the famous scientist, who studied light and helped us learn to break the light waves from the sun into the rainbow color spectrum by using a special glass called a prism. We ready? I think so. Awesome. All right, so yours is attached, mine is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put the base of my box over to the side. Let it dry, let it chill out. And now is the time that we are gonna focus on the lid portion. So this is when your Sharpie, if you have a ruler, you can use it. If not, that's fine as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a box within our box uh, about an inch, an inch and a half in, all the way around. Prisms bend or refract light waves from the sun 
so the individual colors separate out into the rainbow pattern. Raindrops are a kind of naturally occurring prism too, which is why rainbows happen when light passes through the raindrops in the air. The raindrops refract the light waves into the separate colors, and the bow shape is a result of the different angles at which each color's light waves bend. Another way we can bend light is through using mirrors to create reflections. We're going to want to cut three sides. Three. So you want one of the long edges to stay intact because it's basically going to be like a flap instead of a full window. So you want it to be a flap. So three sides. So our next step is now to, you'll open yours up and I'm going to flip mine over. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our plastic wrap and glue and or tape the plastic wrap inside of our box. You want to tape it past the edges. Here. And so that's going to act as kind of like a window. Here's an example of a science experiment you can do at home. I found this small crystal ball at my house and used a flashlight to play around with refracting light and creating rainbows. Awesome! Okay. So one of the last things that we are gonna do is we are going to take our flap and put aluminum foil over it. So this is gonna act, you definitely want the shiny side on this one because it's gonna act as a reflection, a light reflector. When we combine all of these ways that light works, especially absorption and reflection, and we create a way to contain all of the heat that the sunlight waves contain, we can control them enough to use the heat and light to actually cook food in a solar oven. The black lining helps with the absorption of the sun's light waves to transform it into heat energy. We also lined the inside of the box with aluminum foil, which helps with both insulation and reflection. The aluminum foil on the top of the box helps reflect the light into our oven. And the box creates kind of a greenhouse effect, which keeps the heat from escaping so that it can use to cook our food. You can insulate the box even more by using plastic wrap around the outside of the box too. All right, so that is actually all the major components of our solar ovens. Now what you can do if you want to is to spend some time decorating the outside of your solar oven. I might do that just to give it a little extra sass to it, but now it's time to put something in our solar oven. So we want to think about things that might be easy to cook in a short amount of time. So would you want to put like a bunch of big steaks in here? Probably not. Not the best. I think it would take a very long time to cook. So instead, we want to put something in there that is easily melted or easy to um, cook, but isn't cooking. So like beef, meats, those, they actually have to be cooked. So I would suggest putting something in there, maybe like, I'm thinking I might More. do like pizza cheesy toast. That's what I'm thinking. Or I think that Della said the keyword. What did you say, Della? S'mores. S'mores! That's such a great, we are big fans of s'mores here. So what you can do is put your graham cracker, your chocolate, and your marshmallow in there. And then I would leave the top of the graham cracker out. And so when you see your, cho your chocolate melting, that's gonna be your biggest indicator. We wanna get it as close to direct sunlight as possible. Yes! All right, well thank you so much for making a solar oven with me today. And I'm so excited to see the results. Thanks guys, bye. Bye.